Hi everyone, it's Julie and welcome back to my story time. I hope you had a fabulous Thanksgiving. I sure did. And now that we've moved into the season of Advent, I want to share a Christmas story with you every single week. And today I've chosen a brand new book. It was just released last week and I'm excited to share it with you. It's entitled, The Biggest Little Boy, A Christmas Story. It's about this boy right here named Luca. And this is written by Poppy Harlow and illustrated by Romana Kolitsky. And as I read this story, I want you to think about maybe what he might learn, Luca might learn about big things and small things and everything in between and what's the most important of all. So let's read it together to find out. The Biggest Little Boy. Ooh. Look at all that snow, and do you see the snowman? And here's Luca right here. On a tree-lined block in the big, busy city lived a little boy named Luca, who loved big things. Do you think that the big city he lives in is Houston? <laughs> we do live in a big city, don't we? There seems to be quite a bit of snow here. And while we get some snow every once in a while, I don't think this takes place in the city of Houston. This looks like more snow than what we typically have. Let's see. Luca liked big trucks, big toys, big buildings, big buses, and big bulldozers. He also liked big St. Bernard's, big bowls of pasta, yum, and big statues. Do you know what that statue is? It's the Statue of Liberty. But especially, <laughs> Luca loved big, big trees. Since he was a little boy, Luca had tried to climb the biggest tree at Triangle Park. Each year he made it a little bit higher and higher, but never all the way to the top. You see, climbing big trees made Luca feel big. <laughs> that is a really big tree, isn't it? Wow. Luke aside, oh, it's not easy being little, he said to his parents each night as he lay in bed. In the big, busy city, the big grown-ups would bump into him. They just didn't seem to see him down there. They were too busy looking up. It seemed like everything special was up. So, Luca decided he would look up too. <laughs> it was nearly Christmas, and more than anything, Luca wanted a big Christmas tree. The biggest Christmas tree on his block. The biggest Christmas tree in the big city. Look at how he drew this big tree that is taller than all the buildings. Wow, he really does want a big Christmas tree. Do you have your Christmas tree yet? Trees come in all sizes, don't they? Big ones, little ones, wide ones, narrow, thin ones. My tree is kind of medium sized, but it's also kind of narrow too. What about your tree? Hmm. Let's see, as they maybe look for a tree. Can't we cut down the big, big tree in the middle of Triangle Park? Luca begged his parents. But this sign says, do not cut down the trees. Can't we bring home that tree, he pleaded. That tree won't fit in the subway. Hmm. Maybe we can borrow the one in the window, Luca exclaimed. 
will know our tree when we see it, Luca's parents assured him. Each day on his walk home from school, Luca passed the Christmas tree market on the corner of Cranberry Street. Fraser firs, balsam firs, white pines, all lined up from littlest to biggest. Hmm. I wonder when they're going to pick up their tree. As he passed by each tree, brushing his mittens along the prickly pines, Luca daydreamed about coming home with the biggest one of all and decorating it with endless strings of lights and the popcorn and cranberry garlands he made with his mom, hanging giant candy canes on its branches and topping his tree with an enormous shining star. But none of these trees was big enough. Wow. He really does want a big tree, doesn't he? One crisp late December afternoon, after most of his neighbors had trees aglow in their windows, Luca and his mom walked down Cranberry Street, past the Christmas tree market. He was staring up, up, up at the not quite big enough trees when... What do you think happened? Something happened, I don't know, let's find out. <gasps> he tripped, oh no. A little tree had fallen out of its stand and onto the sidewalk. Luca dusted off his pants and stood up. He picked up the little tree and plopped it back in its stand. It wasn't big. It wasn't tall. Its branches were crooked and needles were missing. The littlest tree was anything but what Luca had wanted. But somehow it seemed to be just right. Perfect, actually, just the way it was. Luca smiled at the tree and the tree seemed to smile back. I found my tree, Luca exclaimed. You see, Luca had been so busy looking up that he had missed the special things right in front of him. Special came in every size. Look what he's carrying. We never thought anyone would buy this little guy, the Christmas tree, Francois said to Luca. But I'm glad you wanted him. Beaming, Luca lifted his tree and carried it three long blocks home all by himself. That night, Luca would wrap his little tree with garland and place his favorite baseball cap on the highest branch. Look at it. <laughs> Luca lay in bed, staring up at the glow in the dark stars on his ceiling. He felt big, and he was. He had a big heart for things big and small, and it was Luca's heart that made him the biggest little boy in the big, busy city. The end. It is our big heart that makes us special. God created you to be you and to be the special person that you are. And he has given each one of us a really big heart. And that heart lets us love everyone, big or small, 
and everywhere in between. And it helps us see the world from the tiniest, tiniest little seed to the biggest giant Christmas tree you might see somewhere or anything bigger than that. And this Advent season, I hope that you will find special ways to love everyone and to share that love with others so that they know that Jesus loves them too and that it is a beautiful season to get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.